There's something epic about Magnolia, and a part of being epic in an emotional way is the audience needs to go on the journey with the characters, and some part of that is time. Some part of that is just, I want this to end, but it's not ending, and that is part of the feeling. Um, so that the catharsis comes from, I have just experienced all this, and now finally uh, I can let some of it go. If you, and, and many, many, especially studio movies, are guilty of this, they're just too afraid of people switching channels or leaving or 14-year-olds not paying for it or whatever it is, that they take zero chances in that department. And uh, the movies are less good for it. Now, I'm not saying it should all be as long as Magnolia, certainly not, but there is a way where you have to ask something of the audience. It can't just be candy. It can't all just be, this is easy, this is easy, this is easy. And then you leave and go, what was that? I don't know, it just went in one ear and out the other. I'm, I'm kind of tired. But other than that, I don't know what I saw I, and I thought about nothing. And so uh, the challenge, you know, as we all get better at our crafts is to learn where that line is and make sure that we're paying attention to that. You know, if it bores you in the cutting room, it is likely boring. If it um, is keeping your attention, but y you know, you're always balancing your 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 needs. Uh, um, uh, the movie needs to move faster. Or if we hold on this, we get this little bit, but that screws up uh, how how the next bit is going to work. You know, you're con the, you're constantly making those judgment calls. And and also when you're dealing with multiple characters like that, y it, you have to be open to who is more interesting and not putting equal weight to everybody, even if it was scripted that way, and it takes on a life of its own. Exactly. That, that, that is very applicable here and other movies I've done. Good, good, good. See you tomorrow morning. Okay. Bye. You're running around like crazy. I'm going to be late for work. How much was that? scripted exactly the way? Well, uh, actually we moved sections around, uh, you know, sort of, we see Linda later than we did in the script, and some of the shots, like the dolly in fast, big, big shot, it was in the script. Others, Paul would shoot five or six or seven different things, and then, you know, we sort of choose. But it's written that way. It's very emotional and fluid, and then you settle into this sort of more static shot once you're we're in the story, the John C. Riley and the voice of the narrator, which bookends in the movie, but it's, uh, it's very effective because you're sort of, okay, now we're on the... It sneaks up on you a little yeah. bit. Yeah. This is not an easy job. I get a call on the radio, dispatch. It's bad news. And it stinks. But this is my job, and I love it. It's a beautiful film. It's very, I mean, it's, it's a lot about redemption and guilt and families and death, and, but it's... Um, light-hearted romp. Light, light-hearted, but it's um, it really, to me, the sign of a, a good movie is that it stays with you afterwards. Correct the wrong or write a situation, and I'm a happy cop. And we move through this life, we should try and do good. Do good.